So I'm here with uh, Bob Lee. Can you introduce yourself to the, uh, the viewing public? Hi, my name is Bob Lee. I'm a Google software engineer. And uh, I think we're here to talk about a little tool I just wrote called Twubble. Yeah, what is this little thing? Um, well, so for those of you that aren't familiar with Twitter, uh, Twitter is this kind of mini social networking site where um, you can post status updates to your profile and it's kind of like microblogging. Um, each entry has, is limited to 140 characters, which is kind of a weird restriction, but it actually turns out to be pretty brilliant in practice. It means that um, you can consume tweets from like any, uh, all different types of clients, including like via SMS on your cell phone. Um, the thing that I think makes Twitter interesting for me personally is that uh, I kind of look at it um, like uh, uh, Twitter is to blogging as uh, instant messaging is to email. Um, that's one way to look at it. There's lots of different ways to look at it, which is why it's so hard to explain. Yeah, yeah, like um, I always thought it was kind of funny because it's like, it feels a little bit like I am, but you're not actually talking to someone. Right. Like one person. Right, I, and some people, uh, and different people also use it in different ways, which also makes it even harder to explain. And like, I kind of leave an instant messaging window going in the background uh, where I get all my tweets. And so the way I kind of think about it is like chat only, um, instead of uh, being limited to talking to one person like you are with an instant messenger, except for when you group chat, um, or one chat room like you see in IRC or something like that, uh, Twitter is more search-based, like I just watch for all messages from a certain subset of my friends or certain keywords like Twubble. And so it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like taking the concept of uh, replacing uh, folders with tags and applying it to chat. Right, because yeah, so in the IM client, you can just go in and say track space, whatever you want. Exactly. And then it's just mining the whole exactly. the whole world. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Great, so uh, how does Twubble fit into Twitter? So uh, a couple weeks ago, um, I was trying to find some new people to follow on Twitter, because that's what makes it more interesting, is you follow interesting people. And I was going through all my friends and all the people that they follow and picking out new people. And then I thought, oh, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I could some somehow like automatically find who most of my friends follow? Because I'll probably want to follow those people too. And then, so it's a really stupid, simple idea. <laughs> we have Twubble. It's just a simple little Ajax app that uses the Twitter API to figure out who your friends' friends are and then uh, 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 ranks those people based on who, who most of your friends are with. Okay, so it'll go out and say, hey, uh, John and Jack both link to this guy Harry, and you're not, and so that's two. And so that'll rank more than like exactly. if I was one. Okay, so it's all on number one. So does that mean that like the A-list Twitterati like always show up in these things at the top? Uh, that's the way it used to be, and then some people some people do want that. Some people do want to see like the most popular people, um, but some people just want to see who's popular with their friends, but not necessarily globally. So mm -hmm. I actually added a. a what I call a locality filter, but informally known as the Scoble filter, <laughs> which uh, penalizes people in the ranking algorithm for having a lot of global followers. So people like Scoble get pushed down the list, and then, but people who are uh, a lot of your friends are uh, who have a lot of who a lot of your friends follow locally right. um, get pushed up the list. Very cool. So you can have it either way. Great. So, um, what technology did you use to build this thing? I used a Google Web Toolkit, which is. Uh, a framework where you write your code in Java, but then it cross compiles it to JavaScript. So why did you choose Gwit? Uh, I've been meaning to try it, and I'm a big Java fan. Um, don't get me wrong, I liked JavaScript too. I actually programmed JavaScript for years before I even <laughs> started with Java. Uh, I didn't even start with, with Java until like probably around 2001. And I've been programming JavaScript since '95. Yeah. Uh, so '96, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, but I definitely prefer Java, and uh, I'd heard good things about GWT. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, it, it was a little hard to get over that initial hump because I was still trying to program it like with an HTML mindset and stuff. I was trying to, I'm like, where's the anchor tag? You know, it's yeah. like, well, how did how does this translate to divs and stuff? But uh, once I kind of, I just kind of came to the conclusion, that I'm just going to try and do it the GWT way, and like use their layouts and everything like that, and uh, stay away from HTML. And it was brilliant. I mean, it's such a great framework. Um, I'll probably never do Ajax code another way again. Uh, 
I was working off of the tip a tree version of Wit, the version right out of the source repository, because it's an open source project. Okay. And I didn't even run into one Wit related problem. I mean, oh, wow. It was uh, the only time, the only problems I ran into was like the couple lines of JavaScript I had to write in order to be able to invoke the Twitter API. So, oh, okay. I mean, all my problems centered around that. Outside of that, I mean, it was beautiful. Uh, I love their widget framework. I wrote my own widgets. Um, so for, for the like everything. little, you kind of look like you like mirrored the Twitter look and feel on some of it, the follow me buttons and all that. Right, yeah. So, so you like widgetize to, that? Yeah, yeah. So it's like on Twitter, you can like, if you go and look at your list of followers, it has like a little uh, div or something, of, like with the person's picture and the follow me button and stuff like that. I just created, a, ended up creating a widget out of that and then uh, built upon that. And uh, it was really nice to be able to do this all in Java code. It was, uh, uh, it made it, the, the result was a lot cleaner than if I had written it in JavaScript. <laughs> and also it was great to be able to use my IDE and everything and the refactoring tools. You know, I mean, it starts out it starts out seeming like such a simple idea, but then once you get like a little deeper, you, you kind of hit that level of complexity. Whereas, if I'd written in JavaScript, I would have been like, "Oh man, I really wish I could have gone back and written this in Java." And this was even on this little simple app, it was really one of those cases. Interesting. So, uh, like you said, you talked to the Twitter API, and uh, so how did you go about doing that? Um, so I used uh, a technology that people like to call JSON P which is a JSON with padding, JSON being JavaScript object notation. Um, so basically, I just dynamically write, whenever I need to call a Twitter API, I dynamically write uh, a HTML script tag to my document, and the source for that script tag is a, um, a URL that references the Twitter API. And you, Twitter has a feature uh, called callbacks, uh, where you can specify the name of a method that it should call back. So the JavaScript Twitter outputs, um, it, Twitter will output uh, some JavaScript which calls that method with the results of your invocation. So basically right. that script gets included and the browser goes out and grabs that URL and it's dynamically generated by Twitter from, via their API. And then, so, and then when the JavaScript, or when the browser interprets it, it calls back to my function. And then my function calls back into the Java code. Okay, so you, the JavaScript function you had just linked right back into Java. Right. And so you did all of the like JSON parsing and all that stuff in Java. Yeah, I probably had to have like two or three lines of oh, cool. uh, JavaScript code right. to make that happen. Interesting. So um, what features and things do you want to add to this next? Do you have anything else that you want to keep going on or have you scratch your itch? Um, I really want to, I think kind of the appeal to it is just keeping it simple. So I really want to stick to that. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, it's a stupid, simple idea. I think people really like the execution more. I mean, you click one button, and then right. it goes out and crunches the data in the background, and as it's crunching the data, it's giving you like a live view of the list, the results, like in real time, and, like updating the list. So it's kind of fun in that respect. Um, beyond what I'm doing now, uh, I think like the next thing I might do is I keep this like kind of automatic mode, but also give you a mode where you could like pick and choose your friends. Mm. Um, so like I could pick you and a couple other people that I'm close friends with and Living see the graph. yeah and not pick Scoble and Dave Weiner yeah because I'm probably not they, they follow a lot of people I'm probably not interested in all those people right I'd like something that goes to like friend feed and works out like the differences like you know I, I'm friends on friend we free with this guy and he's got a Twitter account yet on Twitter I'm not connected and stuff like that absolutely we're just like at the tip of the iceberg <laughs> yeah. we need some tools like this. Some, yeah, something that transcends friend feed and Twitter and helps you tie them all together. Right. Yeah, I really want the same thing. Cool. And so, is there anything on the back end of this thing, or is it all just a client side? Uh, there GWT? was no back end to be at all. It was just 100% uh, GWT, um, pure client side. Like your browser talks directly to Twitter <laughs> API. I hosted off yeah. my three ninety nine a month GoDaddy <laughs> <laughs> web hosting account. <laughs> Um, but I did end up adding one little logging thing. It's just it was like a couple lines of PHP so that I could keep track of who gets followed the most and do the uh, top 10, 12 old list okay, cool. and kind of get some stats and keep track of how much it's getting used. And so now you could do that on App Engine, right? Exactly. I <laughs> wish App Engine had been out a week ago. I would have done that. <laughs> yeah. nice. Great. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to chat about Twobble. Cool. Thanks for having me. Great.